Hey everybody, it's Dustin Neese here again. Here we are in Concord at the Old North Bridge. This is where I've been working on my latest painting and I've been working on it for over a year now. So I've gotten to know this place pretty well. And it's a pretty magical spot. It's a pretty amazing place. And it has a really powerful feeling and an incredible energy to it. And I think that, you know, it's, it's no wonder really. I mean, this is where Daniel Chester French's statue of the Minuteman is, and this is where the shot heard around the world took place. It's where the American Revolution began. And this place really resonates with me because it was where a group of simple people decided that their level of discontent and unhappiness with their oppressed state had reached a point where they were willing to give their lives to have the opportunity to make their own world, to make a new world, to make a better one, one that was more in line with their beliefs and their preferences and their morals, their, their values. And you might not think that that's got much to do with painting, but for me it does. That's, that's in a lot of ways what I feel like I'm doing with my work. You know, when I see the news, the off chance that I see the news, or, you know, look on the internet, we're constantly bombarded with crap. You know, some of the darkest, de most depressing, uh, fear-inducing stuff. And you know, I've found that, you know, I'm a sensitive guy and I have to mm, not insulate myself from it, but if I'm going to acknowledge that that exists and that's happening in the world, I need to feel like I can do something about it. And my way of doing something about it is to create my own world. And that's what I'm doing with my paintings. You know, I'm, I'm not just making paintings of what I think is beautiful or what I think is nice. You know, I'm, I'm trying to build my own world. And my paintings are windows, they're doorways into that world. And in my world, you know, the world that I'm holding, the world that I want, there's a whole lot more harmony, there's a lot more peace, people treat each other differently, they interact differently, and you know, it's based on my preferences and what fulfills me and what I enjoy and what I believe in. And that's something that I feel like all the greatest artists in history have done. And, and that's what really draws us to their work. You know, technical mastery of painting is not what makes a masterpiece. I really believe that what makes a masterpiece is the artist's relationship with his canvas. And when an artist just feels like they're making a nice picture or they're pushing paint around basically to try and you know represent what they're seeing that's nice and they can really make something beautiful but when an artist's relationship with his canvas goes to the next level where they begin to feel like their paintings are a place that they live just as much as they do in this world then it takes on a whole new quality because it's not just they're, they're not just pictures, they're places. And I live a good portion of my life in my work, in this world that I'm building. And, and you know, that's what I feel like all these greatest artists in history have done. My, for example, one of my favorite artists and a guy I studied with in Norway, Odd Nerdrum, I learned that from him. You know, I watched him work and, you know, he would spend half of his days working on his paintings and in his studio you didn't feel like you were just in a studio in Norway you know out in the countryside you felt like you were in the world of his paintings when you were in his studio and it was the feeling it was the energy and the vision you know it, it, it was an all-encompassing multi-sensorial experience and his painting spoke not just about what that place looked like but what people's relationships were like, how they treated each other, what the light was like, what their values were. 
And that was incredibly inspiring to me. And, and it made me see all my other favorite artists doing the same thing. I mean, when you look at a Klimt, for instance, you know, his paintings are abstractions. And you could say that he was just uh, inspired by colors and forms and combining the abstract and, and the real. But it was more than that. You know, he lived in his paintings and he created another dimension, another world, another space. And, and again, you know, that's what I feel like I'm, I'm trying to do. And, and that's what makes me so passionate about doing everything I can to share my work with as many people as possible. Because it's not just about putting beautiful pictures on a wall. It's about putting a window putting a doorway, an inspiring vision in someone's home where they can be reminded on a daily basis of not just the actual, but the possible. And more than any painting that I've made before, that's what this painting is about for me, this, this painting that I've done of the Old North Bridge. And I'd like to share it with you today. So let's take a walk and go check out where I've been working. <laughs> All right, so here we are. Here it is, my painting of the Old North Bridge. And like I said, this painting's been over a year in the making. It's the longest I've ever spent on a painting. And it, you know, it's so interesting how they all happen. They all really have a life of their own. But I've never had more challenges and more setbacks in a painting. And you know, it's funny, it's like we're tested at every turn, you know, um, <laughs> to feel like I've brought one of my best works into being, but that it was also filled with the most challenges, to me is really interesting. And I, I think that there's, you know, that that's, that, that that's meaningful, you know, that there's some significance there, for me anyway. And <clears throat> so I just want to tell you a little bit about what happened, because it's actually pretty interesting. Um, I started it last year in September and you know I got about mm, two weeks into the painting and I had, I had stretched this big canvas bigger than this one actually and because uh, I was so excited about it you know it's, <laughs> when you find that new painting that new uh, image that new vision um, you know I just have so much excitement sometimes you know I, I want to make it twice as big as I'll actually even have time for I mean, that's just my nature but um, I'm out here working on it, and I walked away for the can from the canvas for like 10 seconds, and I turned around, and the whole thing's on the ground, everything falls over, and I spilled linseed oil on the backside of the canvas. Now, I don't know if you know anything about conservation and painting, but if you get linseed oil on the backside of a canvas, it's done. <laughs> that will, it'll, it, it's not going to last. So I had to cut the canvas, make the painting a little bit smaller. I mean, it's still big as it is, but I had to make it significantly smaller than I had it and restart. And let me tell you something, you don't restart a painting in the fall because autumn, especially in New England, is one of the shortest seasons. I mean, you have maybe two weeks of peak and I typically work on my paintings for at least two months. So that was not great. <laughs> and, you know, I, it, it was like, you know, panic mode, basically. And, you know, I ran home, I had to cut the canvas, restretch it, and restart the whole darn thing. And I only got about, I, I, I think I worked for maybe two weeks before I came here on October 1st, and all the parking lots were gated off. Parks closed. Remember that government shutdown we had in October last year? Well, this is a national park, and it was closed. But did that stop me? No. <laughs> I jumped the fence. I came in anyway. Uh, you know, I set up and I worked for about a week until one of the park rangers had to say, you know, I'm sorry, but it's my job to tell you that the park is closed and, and you have to leave. So, you know, it's a little disappointing. And I said, you know what? I don't care. You know, regardless of the challenges, I'm going to finish this painting because it's, you know, you know, I really felt even then that it had so much potential. And uh, so I put it away for a year and, and I came back 
And, you know, I spent another two months bringing it into being and coming out here. And, you know, we've had some pretty interesting weather and it, it's been wild. And, and, you know, working outside like this, you know, I, I know a lot of artists and even people that I meet out here when I'm working who just think it's crazy what I do, you know. Why aren't you in a studio? Why aren't you just taking a picture and, and working on it at home? And it really, it all comes back to what I've been talking about. You know, if you're going to build a world, if you're going to make a doorway or a window into a world of your own creation, you have to make it as alive and real as possible. And the only way that I've found I'm able to do that so far is to put every brushstroke on this canvas while I'm standing in this spot. Because when I'm standing here, it makes me feel differently, you know? I'm in a different state, and my painting, the world, the window that I'm making is a reflection of that state. So, anyway, that's my story. <laughs> you know, that's my story of the Old North Bridge, and that's my story of how paintings are not just paintings, but and artists are not just painters. They're creators of worlds for us to explore and to you know, expand our minds and our sense of what's possible. So thanks for watching. And uh, if you're on my mailing list, you know that I'm going to be sending out a free high-resolution download of this painting. And a few days later, I'll be letting you know how you can acquire prints of this painting if you're interested. But uh, either way, I'd love for you to have this painting on your wall, in your home, inspiring you on a daily basis. So please, when I send it to you, download it you know, keep it on your computer, print it out, you know, <laughs> frame it, do whatever you like, buy a print, uh, you know, bring it into your life and, and, and you'll help me be mm, doing my job and fulfilling my, you know, what gives me purpose and, and meaning in the world. So thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Stay inspired, stay expansive, keep creating.